So this is all of my yarn. I got it all out because I wanted to do a new project that I have to go buy yarn for and I was like, let me just see if there's anything I can do with what I have. And I got this thrifting and it didn't have a label. This one, this one, and this one. And I made a halter like crop top out of this copper one. I'm looking at these two and I really want to make a dress and I was like is this enough so I think I'm gonna try that and I'm just gonna make it up as I go so I thought it might be good to record it just in case it all works out so this yarn is unmarked but it's either a three or a four weight and I'm gonna use a five millimeter and I think I'm just going to make a front and a back panel and then attach them at the shoulders and the sides and that's how I'll make the dress. So my last two sweaters I did a front and back panel and I did 20 inches on each and around my ribs it's about 32 inches. I'm going to do the front and back 18 each for 36 inches around total. And for this yarn I did 66 stitches so it's 65. I'm just gonna do the half double crochet for the entire thing. Okay, so I just want to do like a crochet with me thing while I tell you guys some stuff. Um, last night I figured out some stuff about measurements and I want to tell you about it. And also just like why I want to dress and all that. Yes. So, I realized that my butt is probably bigger than my rib cage, and so I measured it, and it is. And I'm gonna do the front panel still 18 inches, but the back panel I'm going to do as much as I need to make up for that, because it is the back, so. And I'm gonna have it go like mid down my thigh a little bit. I don't want it to where I can't spread my legs. So I'm going to do that bigger because I spread my legs a little bit and was like, okay. The reason I want to make it is because I'm the type of person that's like usually naked. And so when something happens and I need to just run out onto like the balcony or like in the hallway or something, I always hate that I have to put something over my head and then pull something up as shorts. So I've wanted to dress for a while just so I can just do one motion and put something on. My chief concern is that I won't have enough of this yarn. So I really hope I do. And I'm just going to make it and I'm just going to go. But yeah, this yarn, I kind of avoided it for some reason. I'm not sure why because it is amazing. <laughs> I love it so much. It reminds me of my scarf. I have no idea what type of yarn it is, which is sad because I think I'd like to have this type of yarn the most, but I'm sure it's really expensive because it's so nice. It could just be that it's small yarn and I just don't work with small yarn very often. I usually just do medium and I've used bulky yarn recently and it's just so fast and easy to do and I love it, but it's very stiff when you use bulky or medium yarn. It doesn't give like the same like soft, like delicate, flowy that smaller yarn uses or produces. So I think I will be using more of the small yarn that I got because I usually don't buy it. All the thin yarn that I have is thrifted and none of them came with labels I can just tell if they're smaller so I'm thinking about adding this to use it up and because I think it would be nice to save on this oatmeal color use up the rest of this copper but I love how it looks by itself so much 
And I like this, but it brings out the, the metallic-y copper in this. Uh, I don't know. I feel like I need to to save on the yarn, because I don't know what yarn this is. But I don't know. I think I am going to add it, just because this is what I have. Because I can always get small this color yarn again. Probably not for as cheap as I got it, thrifting it. But I can always get more and then make more stuff like this and have a dress like this, you know. But this is a yarn I have and they came together and they're like the same. And I want to save on this one to like complete the dress. So I will just use it. It'll be unique. It'll be cool. It was meant to be. <laughs> Good morning. It's a new day. This is how the copper color came out. So I actually did 10 rows of it and the bottom part of the dress will be about 48 rows and I'm at 36. So if it is not enough for a dress, I guess I'll just have a skirt. Or I might try to go find some yarn that's similar to it just to finish it off. I don't know. And I have some measurements for the back panel, but I'm not going to do them and show you them until I'm doing the back panel. So I'm just gonna finish off the front panel see how far up I can get because I think it'll be about 110 rows for the length I want which is 30 inches so I'll see how far this gets me before I'm telling you and planning out um, the back a whole bunch so yeah So it is the next day and I've finished the bottom of the front panel. That's how it came out. So it'll probably sit about here. And I was on YouTube and I saw a thumbnail that had a knit dress on it and they had a slit in it. And I was like, that is the answer <laughs> because I'm so worried when I add more to the back panel that I'll run out of yarn but I'm going to be attaching them on the sides so I can just do the same amount that I've done here and just not attach it starting from the bottom and have two slits for my legs to be able to spread and I also had this up here and was looking at the colors it was like, oh, I could make this dress like a fall dress and add orange if I run out of yarn and I can't find these colors. 
I could do like an orange as well. So today I'll just keep working on this same skein and going up just to see how far it goes since I finished the bottom. And this is 46 rows, and I think it'll be about 110. So I'm kind of halfway there. So, it's looking good, but we'll see. Hello. So yesterday I didn't film and today is day six. So also happens to be my birthday, so that's cool I guess. Just wanted to update you on a few things. This is how it's going. I don't know if you'll be able to see. Um I'll just show you like a different shot. I finished that whole skein of the tan or the oatmeal. So like I said, didn't film yesterday, but I did go yarn shopping yesterday and I was looking for a thin, soft orange to finish the dress off with, like I said, and I couldn't find it. So I was then looking for like an oatmeal tan color and I did find that and this was one of them. I'm actually not going to use this one, even though the colors, it's like different enough that it's not bad looking with the other two colors. But I'm not going to use it because I only had one, and I don't think this will be enough. So I'd be in the same predicament. But I did get it because it's 100% cotton and it's super, super soft. And I thought that was really cool and I'll make like a shirt or something with it. And because it was literally called oatmeal. I was like, this is meant to be. And then I want to make some pumpkins um, that are like stuffed. So I got some orange. And it's funny because this one is called pumpkin. And then this one was called carrot, but I feel like this one's more pumpkin. So the other tan I found that I will use to finish it off, it was on clearance too, so it was like sweet, is this. And it's slightly bigger and it's slightly uh, lighter, but I did a like, so the two colors would be right next to each other. This is my original oatmeal and then the copper and then the new one. You can see it's kind of bigger, but honestly, I think that's fun. That's always funny. I do projects where I'm trying to use up my yarn stash, and then I end up having to go buy more yarn to finish the project. So that's just because I do big projects with the yarn stash, and then I need more yarn. If I did just like a shirt or socks with it or something, I wouldn't have to go buy more yarn. But I wanted a dress, so it worked out. I also went and bought yarn from the Dollar Tree. If you didn't know, they have yarn for $1.25. I got this color and this color and this color. I got this one because I thought it was cool looking and then also I saw it was named Ember. So also meant to be, it was meant to be day of yarn. This one I got because I was like thinking about the pumpkins, but then it's kind of soft and I was looking at it and was like, also, I can just add the orange to the bottom of the dress and add the length that way instead of just the top. Cause I need the top to be soft because nipples. I'm going to add this color to it and it's called terracotta, which is fun. So I will add this somewhere in there. I don't know if I'll put it on the front just cause I'm almost done with the front, but I will definitely add it somewhere on the back cause it doesn't have to be Symmetrical. I mean, it's just like a hodgepodge dress anyways. So this color looks really good with those colors. So I'm gonna put a little bit in there. And that's what I got. 
So this is where we're at with length. I will probably have it honestly the same length as these shorts. So honestly, I could probably start the strap now. So this is how it's looking. So it was at 24 inches, so I'm going to make it 26 inches before I start adding the straps. And for the strap, I went 16 stitches in and then went 8 stitches back and forth for the rows to create the strap. And I did that until they were 6 inches long and I did all of it in single crochet. And now I'm finished with the front panel. So I can start on the back panel. <laughs> and it's day 7 so it took me a week to do that. Okay, so I just finished the whole skein of the copper, and it's the same day. I just had to change shirts because I was uh, super hot. This is the back, and I finished that second skein, and it's been a few days because I was working on this, and then I was like, oh my god, I have the whole back to do, so I have like no motivation to do it. So I started another project, and then that project is also a whole thing, so today I finally got back to this, and like, three or four days but yeah this is where we're at on the back and I just thought I would record the finishing of that skein real quick so now we're gonna go back to this color and then do that for a little bit and then add in that uh, terracotta dollar store yarn I got so yeah All right, so here's where we're at. I've done the 48 rows for the bottom, so it should rest kind of like this. And for the slit in the side, I'm gonna do this whole part, the slit, and then start attaching them right here and go up. So this is how it should go. I had something else to say. <laughs> Oh, and I made the back 20 inches across, so it's about 10 more stitches than the front was. And I'm actually going to start decreasing it now to be the same as the front, because the widest part from this point on is right here, and it's 36. So the 18 from the front and then decreasing the back to 18 total will be 36, so should be good. Okay. 
I've finished the skeins of all of those copper and the two oatmeals now, so that's how it's looking. And I started the terracotta part on the back. And you can see the decrease that I did. I decreased down to 65 stitches. I did two per row from 70 something, I think 75 maybe. And the other, the front is 66 across, so now they're the same. So yeah, I'm just gonna keep going with this and then add in that other yarn I had to buy that's like the light tan for the back. So yeah. I'd have had you in the whole show. Well, now you're a little bit too far away. <laughs> you have to come back just a little bit. Okay, there you go. That's good. Here's how we're looking. I'm not finished yet. I need to tie these off. And I haven't tried it on without clothes, so. The only thing I feel like is a problem is that armpits are so high. And if you watched my sweater video, then you know, I cannot handle things such my armpit. But I think if I wash it and block it, that'll help. But I wish I would have done like a cutout, but I was lazy and didn't know what I was doing. So I was like, I'm just gonna make it like a block. <laughs> so, I could make the straps longer to help with that, but I really like the height that it's at. So, here's a sleepy ticker. Oh, so now I'm going to. Try it on without clothes. Okay, so I nailed it. Like, I don't know if you can see it all. I nailed it. Like, what the heck? <laughs> Armpits aren't that bad. It's pretty soft, it doesn't chafe my nipples. So when I started going up the back, it was like the last 10 rows. Every other row, I decreased two. So one on either end of the row. So that was like, that was five times two. So it was 10 stitches. I went in for the very top. And you can see that it was the right call because it fits very well. I think um, it's great to have all this extra fabric in the back to be able to move and like be comfortable because I didn't want like a really tight dress. I wanted like something comfy. I just threw on, you know, so it's awesome. I just, I don't know what else to say. I guess that I hope like me explaining how I did it in my process helps you do that too. And I hope this was inspiring for you to try new things and experiment, do freehand and 
use up your yarn stash, try to do all that. Even though I had to buy more, it's fine. So yeah, hope you enjoyed watching this process, going on this journey with me. And yeah, maybe I'll see you in the next video. Also, I wanted to ask, when do you stop being a beginner? Is it like, because I've been crocheting since the beginning of June, it's so like almost four months. And I'm like, what is the metric for that? <laughs> I need to know. <laughs> is it like when you start making stuff like freehand or you just know a certain amount of stitches? Like, I feel like I'm a beginner still but also maybe intermediate because I've been able to follow tutorials that are like, I've never read patterns. I kind of know how to read them. I just like don't want to do that. So I'm just wondering, because I guess I would be more intermediate now. I feel that way. After I made the sweaters, I was like, eh, maybe I'm more intermediate now. <laughs> so let me know what you think. When are you not a beginner anymore? And yeah.